Of the many charitable causes out there, hers may be one of the most unique you've heard of. Wendy Schweigart, whose mission is to end period poverty in Southern Nevada, joins us this week for Nevada Week in person. Support for Nevada Week in person is provided by Senator William H. Hernstadt and additional supporting sponsors. Wendy Schweigart is founder of Project Maryland, a 501c3 nonprofit that assembles and distributes period kits containing enough personal hygiene products to get someone in need through a monthly menstruation cycle. Wendy Schweigart, welcome to Nevada Week in person. We're so happy to have you. What was the inspiration behind Project Maryland? So I started Project Maryland April of 2019. We'll be three years old next month which is exciting. Um, I started it after I read about period poverty in a magazine. I read an article talking about the issue known as period poverty, and it just really struck me that I, as a grown woman, had never thought of what does someone do when they can't afford period supplies. So it just, it really struck a chord with me and I, I wanted to help. What does a woman do when she can't figure out where to get uh, any of those supplies we're talking about? Right, so, you know, the results are pretty tragic. Um, people use things that are not intended to be used for their period, uh, such as napkins, straws with cotton inside. Uh, they use, um, I've had stories of people rolling up pads to make them last longer. Uh, or they do have products, but they use them for too long, which can result in infections, everything from a mild infection to disrupting fertility. So it's a pretty big issue. And notice how I'm just struggling to say, products, uh, tampons or pads, there's this taboo that surrounds menstruation. Why? You know, I'm, I'm not really sure why, where it started, but it is true that it is extremely taboo. I've had donors say, if you stop talking, we'll make you a donation. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and the facts are that the more we talk about periods, and that's, I tend to say, period supplies, not necessarily feminine hygiene, because that cues to what is that? Is that deodorant? Is that toothpaste? No, we're talking about your period. I want to get to the point. Um, and the more we talk about this issue, I think because it, you know, it's always been private, um, you know, and some people still feel that way. And, you know, we want to be respectful always of people's comfort levels. But the more we talk about it, is the only way that the issue is going to be resolved. And this is named after your mother. It is. It's named after my mother, Marilyn. We lost her to cancer in 2011. Uh, so our logo is actually her face, and that's actually her signature that I kept off her driver's license after she passed away. Uh, she always wore false eyelashes and nude lipstick. So if you look at our logo, um, those are were her trademarks. And periods weren't her thing, menstruation was not her cause, but she definitely was, she was an amazing woman who had a tough life and pulled herself up by her bootstraps and was a boss babe before that was really a thing. Um, and so she taught us to give back to the community, to treat people with dignity, and that's what we do in her honor. We give people dignity with their period. I wondered what she might have thought of this because she does come from a different time period and we're talking about taboo, would she have said, Wendy, what are you doing? I don't think so. I think, you know, some people in my family will say, you know, I don't know that your mother would like her face on a bag of tampons. And <laughs> I always say, well, her face is on a bag of dignity. That's what we're doing. And I think she really was ahead of her time. And yes, she did come. She was a wife of the 50s and things were different then. Uh, but she always was pretty progressive in certain ways. And so I think she might have been taken aback same as I was about the issue. And then I think she would have said, get after it. Let's, you know, let's work on that. So personal hygiene products, you want to avoid that word because that can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, feminine hygiene, it does, you know, and what I found is certain people are, like you said, it's taboo, so they are comfortable with different terminology. But I found we have better results when we say period supplies. That's what it is, it's for your period. And so let's just get to the point. So you're navigating around terminology. What does one of these period kits include? So when we started, so the kit is intended to have enough supplies for an entire cycle. Now everyone's period's different. That's certainly a moving target. 
Uh, so we just based the bag's contents off the FDA's recommendation average cycles five days, and then per the package, you change your product every four to six, six to eight hours. So our first bags um, have 15 tampons, five overnight pads, because Marilyn never let us wear a tampon overnight, uh, five panty liners, and five hygiene wipes. And then in our travels, we discovered a lot of our clients don't use tampons. And when they don't use tampons, they emphatically do not use tampons. So we developed another kit which has 20 pads, depending, and then the, the sizes vary dep depending, excuse me, on what we have been donated, what we have on hand. So 20 pads, five panty liners, and five hygiene wipes. Do you know why pads are preferred? I think, um, Again, it's a personal choice, but what I'm learning, and again, this is my personal knowledge, I'm not a period expert or culture expert, religious, but it does seem certain religious groups, certain cultural groups, um, anyone with any kind of sexual trauma, you know, about the insertion, they just don't want to use them. And then it's, I've been, sh you know, information's been shared with me that sometimes a panty liner or a pad is just a clean pair of underwear for a person who's home insecure, doesn't have regular laundry facilities. So in this, I've learned so much about what people go through on a daily basis, especially now when gas is over $5 a gallon. And, you know, women put ourselves last normally. And so it's not, you know, without the realm of possibility that you're going to buy your kids milk and you're going to put gas in your car and then you're going to put toilet paper in your underwear and you're going to go on with your life. And that just is unacceptable. Uh, you brought up your mom, Marilyn, not allowing you to wear a tampon overnight. Why is that? I think, again, her being from a different time, I think, and again, no expert, but, you know, there's toxic shock, you know, to wear the tampon too long. I think possibly technology has come a long way since, you know, since her days of tampons. And I think a lot of things are passed down generationally. Uh, so it was just her belief that you didn't wear a tampon overnight. So much that you are learning that's connected to these products. You also talked about women putting themselves last, but th as a donation item, people put this, they don't even think about it. They don't, they don't. So our main mission is to donate to other nonprofits and agencies that serve the community because period supplies tend to be the least donated item when the community comes together to help. People are very concerned about school supplies, clothes. They you know, wonder, does that person have enough food? Are they warm? Which are all super valid points, but there is this one additional piece that people with a period have that is additional and needs to be uh, recognized and provided for. So what are the ways that people can donate and also sponsor a period, I understand? Right. So, you know, first, like I said, we'll just be three years old next month, and navigating this journey has been educational, and I'm learning new things every day. And it, it is helpful to have reoccurring monthly donations. So you can go to our website at projectmaryland.com, and we do have um, a banner will show up that uh, has you sponsor a period for $10 a month. And I never want to be... Um, take things for granted and people's finances for granted. But, you know, if you can afford $10 a month, you set it and forget it. And then you are sponsoring someone with a kit every month. Um, and that reoccurring donation allows us to have a better line of sight on our budgeting. Um, you know, big donations are great. Big lump sums will obviously never turn down. But that reoccurring monthly donation allows us to see what we have coming in, what we have going out, and allows us to plan a little bit better. Do you want people to actually donate the physical items as well? That's great too. What I have learned, again, still on this journey is people like to participate in the way that makes them feel fulfilled, way that makes them feel comfortable. So if that's product donation, we have a link to our Amazon wish list on our website. Um, those items, we do accept any donation of pads, tampons, hygiene wipes, as long as they're individually wrapped. That's what goes in our bags. However, we do find a home for everything. A lot of our clients do prefer in bulk and some other options that help them serve their clients better than the kits we put together. So we are able to serve um, our products up in a wide variety of ranges. But yes, if you'd like to donate to us, um, it is easy to visit our website, go to our wish list, the items ship directly to us. You're doing this in honor of your mother who passed away from cancer. So some would think, well, why not get involved in a cancer cause? But you're also doing that as well. I'm doing that too. How? Yes. So she did. She passed from cancer in 2011, and the American Cancer Society helped us out 
tremendously in that journey. They provided support. Uh, the biggest program we used is called the Road to Recovery, which has been on pause for a while with COVID, but now it's coming back where volunteers drive the clients to treatment. And it was such a godsend to have that because it was just me and her at the time out here in Las Vegas. And um, it was hard for me to get her to treatment at the time she needed to go. So these volunteers came, they drove her, and they became a friend and a resource for her to talk to because you don't always want to talk to the caregiver because, especially when it's your child. Um, so we were very blessed to have them. And so since then, since she passed, I have been involved with the American Cancer Society. I do sit on their leadership board here. And it's just, it's a blessing to be able to give back to them when they gave us so much. And how are you connected to cancer versus con Construction versus cancer. Construction versus right. cancer. So in our day life, so Project Maryland's my labor of love. Um, in our day life, my husband owns a general contracting company, NDL Group, and they are actually our founding sponsor. They donate us a space within our construction company that we're able to work out of, which is outstanding. Um, so being that we are general contractors, uh, American Cancer Society has an annual event called Construction Versus Cancer. It serves uh, childhood cancer research and support. Uh, so every year we are the sandbox sponsor and that's how I got involved. I was looking for a way to get involved and reached out and said, you know, this is a great event. Would you like to sponsor? So every year that uh, it's like a construction themed fair where they bring out equipment and um, booths and the construction community just rallies around this event and it's so much fun. A woman in construction, what is that like? So I'm a woman in construction, but I don't want to take away from any of the women that are actually doing construction. You know, I do the business development, which I love. Our marketing, our community is so fabulous. It is different when you're in the office and you're around job sites, you know, things are rowdy and fun and you know it's 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 a great it's a great atmosphere i love it uh i did want to ask you a couple rapid fire questions oh goodness. okay you have to know the nicest bathrooms in las vegas where are they well i don't know what so i have to say that i would say the nicest bathrooms in las vegas are station casino bathrooms because <laughs> they offer free period supplies you took a picture in their bathrooms that that's a huge deal you it's took a huge. picture on your social media you were at a local casino and they didn't have any they didn't and you know the thing is we're really on a mission to get public restrooms to offer free period supplies because having your period is a natural biological function. We can't control when it comes. No matter what you think of someone's life choices that have led them to the path where they may not be able to afford period supplies, it's still coming. And we need to recognize that. And you know, how do we want someone to go to a job interview or hold their head up high when they have napkins in their underwear? It's just, it's people are missing school, work, it's 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 a problem. So we really would like to see period supplies provided for free in public restrooms, just like the toilet paper. Well, that would be probably your answer to the next question. What does Southern Nevada need more of? Free Peri period supplies. <laughs> Wendy Schweigart, thank you so much for thank your time you. and for coming in. And for more information on how to help Project Maryland, go to vegaspbs.org slash Nevada Week. That is where you can also find the latest episode of Nevada Week or watch it on our air Sundays at 5.30 p.m. and Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m.